Metallic bonding. In this chapter, we're going to discuss metallic bonding. Let's take an example to start with. Sodium is a metal. When sodium atoms bond together to form the solid metal, the outer electron in each sodium atoms becomes free to move throughout the whole structure. The electrons are said to be delocalized. These electrons are no longer attached to a particular atom or pair of atoms. Instead, you can think them as, of as flowing around the whole metal. As you can see in this diagram, the metal atoms are actually properly arranged in a regular structure, but they become cations or positive ions because all, almost all of the atoms lose electrons, the outer shell electrons, and those electrons can flow around the whole structure making it a sea of delocalized electrons. And we have a lattice of metal ions. So a metallic structure consists of lattice, regularly arranged of positive ions in a sea of delocalized electrons. Let's clear it up, move forward. Now, from this one single diagram, we can explain the entire metallic bonding as well as the behavior of metals. Now, I hope you remember from previous classes that we keep saying that metals are usually solids. Well, most of them are, with an exception of mercury being a liquid at room temperature. And most of them have, are dense, have good melting and boiling points, and they are malleable or tactile. They are good electrical and thermal conductors. They are sonorous, so whenever they're hit, they or strike, they produce a sound. And most of the metals are silver gray in appearance. However, gold or copper can be an exception with different colors. So all of these properties of metals can be ex explained from the one single diagram we have discussed in the previous page. But for a better learning, let's go with some more information. Metallic bonding is the, actually the electrostatic forces of attractions between the positive ions and the delocalized electrons. This holds the structure together. Now, metal have giant structures, no individual molecules, and all the positive ions in the lattice attract all the delocalized electrons. So the number of electrostatic forces of attractions are literally uncountable. The ion formed by metal depends upon the number of electrons the original atom has in its outer shell. Thus, all the elements in group one lose one electrons each to form positive one ions, and all the elements in group two lose two electrons each forming two positive ions. Now, different metals have different arrangement of ions in the lattice. Do not worry too much about uh, uh, this when drawing a diagram of the metal. As long as you can draw the ions in regular arrangement, that will be fine. One more hint, when they come up, uh, they come to write the symbol of uh, for a metal, such as sodium in equations. Students who know about metallic bonding sometimes worry whether they should write it as sodium or sodium ions. You write it as atoms, any, not the ions. Thinking about the structure as a whole, the number of electrons exactly balances the number of positive charges. So the metal as a whole carries no charge. Again, that's neutral. Talking about the physical properties of metals, most metals are, are hard and have high melting points. This suggests that electrostatic forces of attraction between the positive ions and the delocalized electrons are strong and in a very big number. In the case of sodium, only one electron per atom is delocalized, leaving ions with only one positive charge in them. The bonding in sodium is quite weak as metals go which is why so fair, sodium is fairly soft, we can easily cut with a knife, with a low mel melting point for a metal. Magnesium has two outer electrons, both of which are delocalized into the sea, leaving behind ions that carry a charge of positive two. There is much stronger electrostatic attraction between positive two ions and the delocalized electrons. This means the bonding in stronger is magnesium and even the melting point is higher. Metals conduct electricity, Proving that from the same diagram, metal conduct electricity because the delocalized electrons are free to move throughout the whole structure. Imagine what happens if a piece of metal is atta attached to uh, an electrical power source, the positive ions, delocalized electrons, and we have atta attached it to a power source. 
positive and negative ends of the battery. Electrons attracted to this end by the positive terminal of the power source and then flow away along the wire. More electrons pouring along the wire from the negative terminal of the power source to replace those from moving away in the middle. So it's a huge exchange of electrons. Now in chapter seven, when we were discussing ionic compounds and how they conduct electricity, we were talking about ions are free to move in the molten or aqueous solutions of ionic substances. They do not conduct electricity when they are solid because the ions are not free to move. Metals on the other hand, conduct electricity in solid or molten because the delocalized electrons are free to move in both the states. It's important that you do not confuse them that ionic substances have ions that carry the charge and move because of which they become conductors in this specific state. Metals have electrons, delocalized electrons moving. So they are conductors in their solid or liquid, both of the states. So it's the difference between ions and electrons moving. Both are charged particles though. Metals are malleable. Metals can be hammered into different shapes. This is the word what the word malleable means. If we apply a force on the, on the piece of metal, layers of positive atoms, ions, sorry, positive ions slide over one another. This does not affect the bonding in the structure. The positive ions are still attracted to the relocalized electrons. It's just that they slip over one another, forming layers. Hence, they're ductile, uh, they're malleable. Metals are also ductile, which means they can be drawn into wire, stretched or pushed into wires. And the explanation is literally as the same why they are malleable. So as they can move, the layers can slide over one another. So it's pretty easy. So that's about it for metallic warning. Thank you.